The next lecture is about key issues to attract and retrain, ret retrain, <laughs> retain staff. And um, you may, if you have listened to my first lecture, you will see one or two slides are quite similar. And actually, there are some parallels uh, between attracting clients and staff. And actually, when I um, talked to experts and, and I also did some online research, I detected that um, there are some videos out there uh, on YouTube and whatever that you can find that's actually a video meant for customers but also to attract new staff. So the, um, let's say there's no real border in between that anymore. So having a clear profile and showing it to everybody is part of the picture. So what are we going to talk about it? Uh, uh, in this uh, section, how, how to find stuff, where to find stuff, and how to select if you have choice. <laughs> There's not so much choice anymore. And I've talked in the workshop to some vets and asked, uh, do you have lots of vets applying to work in your office you can choose from? The answer is no. Then a little bit about, again, the difference uh, what's different with millennials, and also a little bit about how to keep people that you have found, that you are happy with, and want them to stay. So, again, it's about profile, values, visions, about a job description, very, very important. So, if you don't know, if you don't know exactly what you're looking for, then you, won't, you can't find it normally, logic, where to look and advertise, how to select, check and test, and how to keep people happy. <laughs> That's also uh, not, not always so easy. And what about m millennials? So is there something special? And if yes, what is so special? So what kind of people do you want in your practice? You want loyal ones, always on time? Right? Stuff always on time, no discussions, never complaining. It's the same. You, you want to have the same kind of stuff than you would like clients, but you want to have stuff that engages with your clients, earns money, and promotes your, uh, promoting your practice. Okay? Because even if they are mainly there in your office, but even if they are outside, if they're communicating digitally or even going to the grocery store, it's still the image of the practice that they are carrying with them. So, and then think about it. Why should someone do that for you? Because that's a lot. That really is a lot. That's what you want, but it's a lot. So, <laughs> did I just see you go like this? Okay. Believe me, it, it helps, <laughs> but it's not the only solution. Money. So do some homework, same as when you are um, trying to attract new clients to your practice. Why should, think about why should staff want to work with you? Because you're so nice, good looking. Hmm? You do an awesome coffee in the morning. Whatever. What is your profile as practice? What are your values? It's the same exercise. Your mission statement, do you have one? No, now you know you ha should have one. You have to get to start work on it. And what do you offer that somebody else doesn't as an employer? Because, believe me, there's a war for talents out there. Lots of young vets. No, not lots young vets and lots of practices. In my time, it was lots of vets and not so much practices. Now, it's different, okay? So they are selecting, they're looking at their future employers saying, okay, why should I work with you? What's the difference? What are you giving me? What's the reward? What's new? What's different? What's exciting? And think about how do you get this message outside? Okay, it's not enough if you have it, if you're in your clinic and you're totally convinced you're the best person to work for, the best employer in the world, and nobody else can see it, okay? So again, it's who, what, and why. Who wants to have new stuff? 
What are your specialization more? Third lecture, tongue tied. And your offers, special care, extraordinary service. Create a strong profile. Sit down and think really what, what do you what are you doing here and what makes you special. Okay, a vaccination does not make you special. That's something totally ordinary. It's boring actually. For millennials, pff, they've seen it all. Okay? They need something exciting. So candidates, if you're looking for people, they need to get the feel of your practice because that is what why they want to work with you an emotional decision. Okay, you have to introduce your business. If you want to attract people to work for you, they want to know some facts at which location. Lots of you have some, ch some of you have chains, veterinary practice chains. So at which, uh, at which location are you looking for people, services, number of people working with your business is also interesting. And important, with the whole context, lots of facts, but most important, sorry, go one back, choose emotional wording and catchy phrases. Okay? Must Music. Okay, so I found this on the net, and this is a just, it's, it's actually not an, an ad for a job. But this is one, one uh, good example for employer branding. Actually, you can contact. You see, oh, I need this one. Here you can see it's from the BISF. It's the biggest chem chemical company in the world. And it's located where near I live, so I searched what are they doing on the net, just to give you an experience. Uh, and I'm going to translate what, what's written there. And imagine you are... This young guy, he says, I love to see the results of my work everywhere on the roads. Okay, one time even Hollywood called and we developed the paint for a James Bond car. Is that a strong message? Okay. So, but it does not actually say come to work for us. Nothing. This is all. Because you don't need more actually. <laughs> Okay, these guys who are, the guys you are looking for, guys and girls, they are savvy enough now to find where to, to call and say, hey, I want to work with you. This is just to get the people attracted, to show. Okay, employer profile, so your profile nowadays called employer branding. It includes who are you, what are you looking for, which people, and you really try to attract people, what do you expect from them? You have to sit down first and think about these topics. What do you offer? And the, if you're very, you have to be very clear and very precise. How can somebody apply? Okay? And put the answers in attractive, short, and clear wording. I'm going to give you now another example because the worm has to taste the fish and not the fisherman. And if you're struggling, if you're looking for people and if it's really crucial to get new stuff on board, special, specialized people or even a normal vet that you can, that for everyday practice, and if you're struggling with the wording and if you say, ah, I'm doing it old, old school style and nothing is happening, then there are agencies that can help you. Okay? It's not, you don't have to, <laughs> I know, you're all vets. <laughs> you're all thinking, I can do it all. Yeah, I don't, I can do it all. I don't need to delegate and so on. It's not true. Same for your website. If you want to have nice photos, book a professional photographer with a briefing and everything. Okay? Just don't do some handy, uh, some mobile photos and put shots and put them on the website. It does not look good. If you're doing a video on Instagram, it can be hands-on. That's a total different media, okay? So employer profile, employer branding. This is, I'm going to translate it for you, don't worry. This is actually uh, an ad or a whatever it is. 
it's, it's difficult to, to distinguish it, but it's, it, they're looking for people. This company is looking for people, and this heiße Ware means hot stuff. So these guys actually are cool, right? And maybe it's not, it's not a fantastic job, and maybe I, I, I'm <laughs> totally sure that they, they have problems to find people working for them. Okay, so, and the next message is, it's very subtle, with garbage, we create heating for 35,000 households. So it's all said, okay? It's just one message. Actually, this job is cool. It's hot stuff. Um, this is the company. This means <laughs> this green, <laughs> to be that green, you have to be orange. Green meaning echo. Okay, ecological here. This is especially for, for millennials, sustainability, eco, natural, blah, blah. I, I don't mean it negatively, but this is, this is the message. So it's all there in one picture. I don't think that's easy to do. <laughs> they have agencies for this kind of stuff. Okay, but this is the way to go for the future. Not an ad in a, in a, in a magazine, in a vet magazine with 20,000 words. Nobody's going to read that nowadays. Okay, nobody. You're not, and you're not touching their souls. Another one, it's also BASF, but I find it quite nice. They have these, these pictures, they're different ones existing, and they have success loves personality. Okay, personality, the elder <laughs> guy here, and success, young guy. And so you can be, you can, um, this message, I, um, this picture is supposed to transport that BSF is one of the oldest companies. And so if you apply for the, to, to work there, you have a very long career in front of you. Okay, and uh, this is the HR girl. And this is not an explicit ad for stuff, right? It's a picture. And it explains some of the values and some of the things that BASF does. And this is classical form of employer branding, showing profile, being attractive, and with a call to action. Because inside here, there's the, um, there's the website where to go on if you are interested in this company and working for this company. So. I think it's quite interesting to see what's going on outside, so we can copy a lot of stuff. So, what makes an employer attractive, aside from, uh, from having an interesting website and employer branding? Veteran, always think, also you, the people that apply to work for you, they also go through your website. So the ideal combination for clients and maybe future stuff, and sometimes um, clients are future stuff, stuff, right? It, not stuff, stuff. Uh, it can happen, okay? Not only vets work for you, it can be nurses, other support stuff. So they all go through your website normally. And in two seconds, if you manage to have your values, your mission statement in an attractive, environment there, you're already doing a lot. So, but what's, what makes an employer attractive? Veterinary medicine is not enough, especially for millennials, because they, they're thinking a little broader than the baby boomers and the other generations in between. They are not so focused, but even if they are vets, they're not living on this typical vet planet, okay? They still are able to look outside they love flexible working hours, work-life balance, and with our profession growing more and more female, we have to have concepts for that. Because actually, less and less qualified vets are there, more and more females, so they want to have children, they want to have children and career, so we need some kind of idea how to deal with that and how to, to make it possible for them. Otherwise, and they're looking for that. If as an employer nowadays does not offer solutions for that, he's out. We lose these young, highly educated, in this case, women, okay? Or even men wanting to stay at home and take care of a baby 
for three months, half a year. Lots of countries, that's already possible, but even not everywhere, okay? Work-life uh, balance, continuing education is also very, very important. Does my um, future employer um, pay for courses? Does he give me time for courses? Or do I, do, a, do I have to do it in my holidays? Okay, in my spare time, maybe on the weekend, working <laughs> full hours in the week, and on the weekend I go to a training course. So this is what, what's happening. Positive environment with feedback culture, something a lot of vets still have to learn. One of the parts of Germany, there's a saying, is if, if, I, if I'm not angry with my employees, that's praise enough. Hmm? I'm praising them by not being angry. So that's not the right approach. Feedback culture is much more, okay? To talk to the people and found out, find, tell them what's good and where we have to work and so, and okay, money is also an issue, sure. Of course, we're talking about veterinary, veterinarians, future veterinarians that have s spent some time at university. It's an academic uh, uh, career, so yes, it's, uh, you have to pay some money also. So, and I, I found when I was uh, researching on the net about employers and branding and millennial, millennials and all that stuff, and I found a quote from Steve Jobs, and I think it's quite cool and brings some stuff really to the point. Because if you, if you take a lot of effort and find smart people, the worst thing to, you can do is tell them what to do. For that, you can, need some, can put some dummies in your practice. Okay, so if you are looking for someone, sit down and think which role do you need to fill. You know, there are two, two approaches. The main or normal approach that is also that I'm telling you is to sit down and think about which role do I need to fill, clear description of tasks, definition of working hours, salary, depending on the customs. If you write a, an ad somewhere, um, it depends on your country if it's n normal or usual to put in the money that's going to be um, the salary, but in some countries yes, in some countries no. And Think about the team members, and it, please don't put in words like flexible, team-oriented, because that's, what is that? It's not clear. Of course, team-oriented, but if you put, use these words, explain them. Then there's the other um, approach. I don't know, maybe you have some Japanese people here. I read a book some time ago. They <laughs> don't look for people to spe uh, fill specific tasks. They're just looking for people that are willing to work for them, and then they assess them, assess them, and then assign them to a task. It's the other way around. Both is possible if you are on the way to employer branding, and maybe you have a catchy phrase and a nice picture. You will attract all kinds of people, and actually, it would be a good idea to to then look at them and see where where they fit in your office or where they fit if you train them. Okay, it's the other way around, but it gives you more flexibility. This is the classical approach. Which role do I need to fill, tasks, and so on. Both is possible. And when you are the lucky one and you have more than one person that applies for your job, you need to do an interview, okay? And I advise you, I recommend that you, uh, it's to find out if a candidate fits. And I advise you to, f to really sit down beforehand and think of the most important questions to filter out if this person fits. Five to ten questions, not too much. And sort them by, pri prioritize them, the most important questions and so on. And th also beforehand think about the answers. What is the best answer to give that shows you as an employer that this people, this person fits into your office and then you can rate the, the best answer is five points, four point three, and so on. So in the end you have answers and you have rated them and you have points. 
So that's easier to, um, if you're lucky, you have more than one candidate, more than one job interview, to compare these people, because your memory may not be that reliable after two or three interviews, okay? So, written script, and what I also recommend is a little bit like an assessment center, but not that, that tough, case scenarios, role plays, how would you manage cat obesity, dog diarrhea, an angry owner because of cost? Because you, you want to find out, you can train that when the people are working for you, but still you want to find out if this guy or girl has some idea to handle these situations, okay? And does it fit to your values? Okay, does he say something like, okay, Dr. Aria, well, I give him an antibiotic and I give him something else and then I send him home? And we will phone if it's not better? Or does this guy or girl say, oh, well, okay. Well, I will do a, a comprehensive clinical exam. I will explain my findings to the client. I will discuss and agree on further di diagnostics. I will give the client a, a plan or um, preview of the costs. We're going to talk about that. And my offer will most certainly include blood work, x-ray, and a diet. It's totally different, right? <laughs> Even if the other one can learn that, it still shows you a little bit of mindset. Okay? So these are, you can choose any, any examples, but this is one of my examples. So, what you can train, technical stuff, computers, phones, sirens, machines. So if someone is struggling with the software, don't worry. You can manage that. It's just training, okay? Lots of, lots of, uh, still lots of uh, young or new employees in, in veterinary clinics often don't get enough training. So if you want to keep the people you employ, I advise you make a training plan so that they grow into your practice step by step by step, okay? What you can learn, train is corporate appearance. It's mainly just clothes, procedures, specialized knowledge, and also communication skills. You can learn that. But what you should look to, what, what's a little bit more difficult to, to find out if they have it and to train to a certain extent, outgoing. Is this somebody who wants to interact with people or is this somebody who wants to sit behind the microscope the whole day? If this microscope person has to be at the reception or on the phone, it will be really tough. Okay, so you can find out beforehand. Caring for people, caring for animals. Some people say that they are, but they are not. You can find that out. Dedicated to veterinary medicine, so wanting to learn, being excited about the me medical stuff, and willingness to learn. Okay, you can find that out, for example, by asking, where do you see yourself, if you're working with us, where do you want to evolve? What's the next education, continuing education course that you would plan? Uh, well, um, I don't know, maybe guinea pigs? So, ask, ask the right questions and you will get interesting answers. So, and then, the next hurdle would be a job trial. I really recommend that you take these people into a trial period, but not just letting them move with the staff, giving them really specific tasks to test, and already you have maybe some ideas from the interview where to look a little bit closer, so you assign specific tasks. And also, please find out if they fit to your team, what your team is saying on these people. Get feedback from your team. Even if you think somebody is very, very unique and valuable and whatever, and the whole team says, please, no, then I would rather suggest, if you have the possibility, to give someone else um, the career or the opportunity to work with you, then the guy or girl, your, your staff says no, okay? And 
stressed specific situations. Also, you find out something that's, that's missing in the interview. And this way you get a more complete picture, okay? Because people, if they want to have a job, they may tell you a lot of things, but if they are really true, you can find out in a trial period. Take that time, it's valuable time. And then retaining interviews. I'm gonna quote from a study done by the Hayes Group in Germany, 2012, 18,000 German employees asked, young ones, millennials, um, what's the most, and this is prioritized, this is the, the ranking they gave, what's important for you? And you can see money is somewhere in between, but it's not on top of the list. So working in a good team, fulfilling job, fulfilling is especially something that millennials are looking for. Fulfilling, something that, that makes sense, not just a job to earn money that makes sense. Money, okay, good execu executive, a good boss, and freedom to make decisions. Very important for the young ones. They absolutely hate the feeling of being bossed, of being dictated, of getting too um, strict barriers. They need areas where they are allowed to make uh, their own decisions. And when we are talking about money, I found this quote, that's a German uh, motivation guru, this one. They Books are also translated into English. Who comes because of money will also leave because of money. So if someone is highly motivated by money, well, that's if you are prepared to pay a lot. For the time being, it may work, but not in the long run. Because in the long run, working in a good team, fulfilling job is more important. Okay, and please remember, we have a war for talents out there. There are more practices looking for vets than the other way around. So they can select and they can compare and they will do that. They will look, where do I get good salary, but also I'm in a good team. I have the chance to learn more and all that, all the other stuff. They will look and if you, don't check more than one box, sad. Okay, what's the big issue with the millennials? For those who've been in the first lecture, it's kind of a repetition. Um, they grew up in abundance, so everything was there. No wars, no, nothing is not restricted. They, everything was there. Nothing's impossible, just a click away. You can order anything in most cases. Um, they made the experience, hard work alone doesn't make happy. <laughs> they saw it in their, in their grown-ups, yeah? father, mother, they saw it. It's not, you know, it's a different generation. And for them, work-life balance is a must, okay? They like to work, but they also like to live. <laughs> so I think it's totally okay. It's just, it can cause conflicts. Uh, for elder other generations to cope with that, but actually it's, it's not a big issue if you try to find into that mindset. They're looking for a higher purpose. Work has to give also fulfillment, and they like to play. Changing jobs and locations is not an issue. No, they're prepared to leave it if it doesn't work. Okay, so maybe you have, if you're we have some young people working for you, it takes a little bit more effort. Man, often I'm asked if millennials are lazy or they, people tell me, ah, they just don't want to work, this generation, they're so lazy, they grew up with everything, they don't know hard work anymore. It's not true, they're not stupid, it's all. They're not prepared to work 24 seven for a minimum salary, like, a lot of other generations, okay? They are just, they know their options and they're very self-conscious. And they say, I don't know, I'm not selling myself just to be in this office or that clinic. I'm not. I know what I can, I know who I am, and this is, has to fit. So actually it's, but if you know that, it's not that difficult. So to find 
new employees. First of all, again, same as with the clients, you need profiling and employer branding. If you don't have a clear message out there, what, who you are and what you are offering, nobody will be interested. Well, some will, but not the ones you want to have, okay? Then you define and locate your target groups. Where are they? Okay, if, do you need a specialist? Do you need an all-rounder? Do you want a graduate just fresh from college? You must find out where they are. So they are here. They are not in the newspapers. <laughs> They're here. Instagram, Facebook. Facebook is old already. <laughs> <laughs> Facebook, oh, oh, oh. okay. So in Germany, the vets are just realizing, ooh, there's Facebook. Should I have a Facebook site page? Ah, okay. If you're starting, move, go directly to Instagram. <laughs> Everybody's going there. Instagram, Xing, Xing, LinkedIn, these platforms are also very valuable. And, but it starts here, okay? The basis is who you are and what you are offering, especially what makes you different from other people who want to hire vets. That's important, okay? You, as a, sh as a boss and as a team, what do you differently? What's your style? Because that's very important. And then find out where the target groups are. And with these two, this you have to do yourself and your team, but with these two, you can actually find agencies doing that for you. Headhunters. It costs money, but it's well invested because they really know how to search and they talk to these people, they select, the pre-select them, so you get the creme de la creme when you do an interview. I, I know that because my son is doing that, but not for the veterinary business. He's a kind of a headhunter. I know it's a lot of work, he actually stalks 100 people at least on the net. Then he narrows it down to 50 and, and, and narrows it more down, talks like telephone interviews with 20 and then selects two to three to four to present to the new employer. And normally if it's done like that and you have two or three interviews, it works long time. This is what you want. If you feel overwhelmed by all this profiling and attracting business, there are people out there, I think nearly in every country now, whom you can, an agency, whom you can engage to do that part. Or even if you, not headhunting, but even um, getting your message on the, on the different platforms. Okay, marketing agency, wrapping up your profile that you have to do into nice words, catchy phrases, good pictures. Who was here with Susie's uh, lecture this morning? So you know the power of a good image, okay? And it's, it's just the same, doesn't matter if you're, try, if you're talking to your clients or if you're attracting new stuff. The principles are the same and you can even use the same pictures. Good pictures, high quality pictures. So the time <laughs> invested in this is very valuable, time and money. But the return on investment is very, very good. Okay, I think so, thank you. My final message again, be empathic in your message to potential new stuff, then you're magnetic, you're like a magnet. Okay, and if you want to n have more info on practice management and scientific topics, you register online, it's just three or four clicks away, okay? You have a whole bunch of knowledge there for you to read. And also we have uh, e-learning modules. They're very fun, funny and fun. Where you, can, you and your people can engage, it's about client experience, client service, telephone service. I think under 10 minutes, I don't know because <laughs> I've seen them so often to validate them, I don't exactly, but I think it's under 10 minutes and you can do it on a big screen in your practice, sit down with your team and watch these and, and do this uh, interactive e-learning course.
Thank you.